So this is the third day working on this card on the hangman card for um, the Tarot of Echoes and I'm just going to finish up some little things that I want to do before I consider the card done mostly just do some leaves and kind of tighten everything up And then I might work a little bit on the next card, which is the tower card. So I'm just adding some leaves and maybe some more branches. I see we have somebody on. I'm not the only night owl here. So I'm pretty happy with where it's headed. I'm at a point where if I do any more major things to it, it could go south. So I'm just going to kind of keep it where it is. And 
and um, maybe work a little bit on the clouds. And the next one, the next card, the tower, I haven't, I mean, it's in the um, pencil stage right now, so I'll work a little bit on that one. But I do want to have this done so I can maybe put it in a template tomorrow. So again, I'm working with um, watercolor, Daniel Smith, and this is a hot press paper. I prefer the hot press because it doesn't have a lot of texture, so if I want to work in um, pen and ink, then it will go down smoother than on something with a uh, harsher surface. So he was, he's going to get cropped around here, so right before his head and this branch. So I'm going to kind of pull out more of the clouds. And this is one of the most tedious parts, trying to get the the clouds, the edges. Last night's um, work that I did on it after the live, I forgot to click the save button, so it got deleted. So now it looks like I jumped from one stage to another, but there was quite a in-between process there from the first video to this one. Move it a little down so I can work on here. Forgot to spray my, oops, sorry. I use a spray bottle to um, loosen up some of the paints on my palette in case if they dry.
and some of the texture around here was created with salt all these little intricate dots and once they dry you can kind of pull more detail out of them Hi Nancy. Um, yes, that that's my plan. Since it's a companion deck, um, it would make sense to keep it the same size and the same cardstock. Um, if for some reason it would get picked up, I, um, I would probably still print. Um, myself on that cardstock like a number of decks before I would agree to that because it's a you know it's a package hey Christy <laughs> I am doing the third and final um, paint on this one on this card and then I'm moving to the tower And um, the tower one gave me a lot of, um, I had to sit with that one for a while till I could come up with something because there's so much um, baggage that comes with the actual label of the card that when you try to create new visuals for it, um, it's almost like your mind gets a block especially if you've done other um, cards or other decks sorry and um, for the you know I did the bone stone tarot card I did the abyss tarot card and now I'm doing this tarot card and I was like, okay, <laughs> it's still called the tower. What do I do? But um, I think I came up with a happy compromise. Like part of me wants to rename them to match the, like to, not to match the card, but to keep the feeling of what the card is, but to give it a different name. But unless I do that for all of them, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to do that now. Th thanks, Nancy. Um, yeah, the Oracle of Echoes. I'll bring it back. Um, it's currently sold out, and I was going to order more, but um, with the pandemic, it's kind of um, like I don't want to do that right now. I'll wait probably a couple months. And... Um, try to order more but um because I only order I don't order like 5,000 at a time I will go in little batches it just works for me that way
Yeah, um, it's some cards are harder to cut, keep coming up with fresh ideas, but. It also depends on the style that, like the medium that you're working with. So, the abyss was pen and ink, which had much more detail and took forever <laughs> to do. Um, and the the bone stone was also was, um, well, it was watercolor and ink, but it didn't have as much detail as just the plain black and white with ink if that makes any sense but it was um that one was actually easier because it was also work working with somebody else and bouncing off ideas so in a way it made my work much easier versus when you have to do it by yourself um because you're accountable for your own images let's switch to a different brush every day I keep saying I'm gonna work earlier I'll paint earlier I'll do like a 10 p.m. instead of 1 a.m. and I never do <laughs> I always end up the same hour so I think I'm gonna call this one pretty much done so you can guys can kind of see him up closely I'll flip him around a little bit and um, I'm going to try and put him in a template tomorrow. And now I'm going to switch gears to the tower card, if I can find my new board. Okay, here we go. There. So this is the tower. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the bone stone too. Um, you know, I have the sample deck, but it doesn't. I mean, it's not. It's not this. I mean, it, it's this. It's a. It's a good feeling, but at the same time, I know that it. It's going to be printed on uh, different cardstock and stuff. So I don't have the actual finished product so so this is the tarot I'm gonna oh, oh, sorry not the tarot the <laughs> the um, tower of the tarot of echoes and um, the idea of something so vulnerable you know this little bird build its nest and found this lantern and the way I saw it was that the hermit um, went out searching with the lantern and somewhere along the way after um, he discovered himself he left the lantern behind and they made a little nest in it so they made their little nest and were nice and safe and then big storm came and is threatening their little nest so that's the story <laughs> I mean if I write it down it's probably going to be a little bit more elaborate than this but I 
I was just looking at the the idea came because the tower, you know, you're, and especially with well, a lot of things are happening now, right? A lot of people are um, losing, you know, their business, and it's just a very unfortunate event, and it's such a tower moment for a lot of us that it kind of put things in the idea of you're you built something for yourself and it's under threat so this is why the um the tree and the birds but i did put the lantern in in relation to um the hermit because um after a lot of um like they're they're using a an item that they found and um made something with it Let's see if i can get this lightning bolt So this right here is going to be the lightning bolt. I just didn't want to make a tower, like an actual tower. I've been doing a lot of reading. Um, <laughs> been playing with cards a lot lately so um I'm more connected nowadays than before um so seize the moment I think my next deck will be probably a I'm gonna try and do another Lenormand because I do like Lenormand Okay, so the lantern is gonna be maybe a little bit of red. And the yellow here. So I'm thinking this will be like a night scene because you can't really see the lightning bolt during the day very much. So I'm going to go with having the blue around here. I I like um the Norman um Christy. I find it kind of so if I'm doing a reading and I have the tarot and I need more of explanation on something, I will combine it with the Lenormand. Because the Lenormand will give you more of the mundane, I guess, than the tarot will so they kind of work together for me but I'll still have like a book around if I need to have some explanation yeah exactly like a clarifier so I'll do the general reading with tarot and then if I'm asking you know if I have a specific question in mind that needs to be clarified and I'm not getting it from I'm not getting the clarity from just the tarot um, what I will do is pull a Lenormand 
like a small spread instead of going back and pulling more tarot cards. It's almost like what you would do with an oracle. Um, but the Lenormand will talk to you directly about work or relationships. You know, it has the certain cards that speak exactly to that. And that's why. Yeah, Oracle decks the same. Um, I do like them to have to be more um, all encompassing. I am not, I can't work with the ones that are all positive cards, I guess, because I don't know. I just feel like I want to know. <laughs> I want to get the, all the information without sugarcoating it so telling me that you know everything is nice and fluffy and I, I do see their value in the sense like if you want a feel good um, card or reading that that's gonna definitely there are times when you need that um, but it doesn't do me any good to hide <laughs> i mean if it's a clear reading that i want depends on the on the purpose right so if you're just doing a general yep i i totally agree i want i want to have that um clarity and sometimes it can be quite tough um it's like tough love but just because i don't pull the tough cards doesn't mean that somewhere they're it's not there you know i'm just kind of let's add some brown here I haven't determined what type of birds they are. I haven't, I know I drew them, but I can't figure out what birds they'll end up being. Hmm. Kelly um, has a good Lenormand series, so I, I did um, watch her Lenormand explanations um, years ago when I first started getting into it, so um, I just lost my brush. <laughs> it came out in the water. Wow. Oh well. Guess I need another brush. I did buy books too on them, so. But just like with anything, right? Like I, when I started, when I took up um, watercolor, I did look in a, a lot of books um, just to see like different textures and stuff. I mean, you can learn by yourself, but it's much, much harder and it takes, it'll take much more time. Now I have to figure out what card I'm going to do after this one. 
I might try for temperance card. Temperance is a good card. Or justice. I saw a number of good decks that have been put out and um, recently, so I have been contemplating buying a couple more, but there was one, oh, now I can't remember the name of it. It just came out, it's like it has a B on it. Um, oh gosh, my brain is... Has fallen asleep. It's a bee. It's a watercolor. It has like isolated images. And it's a bee. And I know. Uh, I saw it on Instagram. So you know you know which one I'm talking about, right? It's a um, fairly recent deck. And I want to look at the name, but I can't because I'm using my phone, so I can't look it up. <laughs> but that's the one I was looking at. I think the creator's name is Melissa, from what I remember. I See, I remember the creator name, but I don't remember the deck name. <laughs> okay, thank you. Get these birdies. Hi, Gemma. Thank you. Yes, my soul whispered oracle. That's the one. <laughs> Thank you. I am I totally losing it. How you doing, Gemma? And the and the creator's name is Melissa, correct? Am I remembering that or
yeah her her deck is is beautiful um Melissa, see, I did remember correctly. Her name is Melissa Selvaggio. In case you guys are watching this after, I'll try and save the video this time around. Um, so giving her a little shout out for her lovely deck. Yes, I remember, I remember names, um, and since I had kids, I now remember the parent, I, know, I remember the kid's name, but not the parent's name. It's always so-and-so's mom or so-and-so's dad, which is really sad. Um, but it's not done on purpose brain freeze shuffle tarot nina did a video on it i'll have to check it out i haven't been on youtube that much lately um so i kind of missed a lot of um content so if you're coming in late um, I did finish the card for the hangman and now I'm working on the tower card just started on it I don't go on YouTube as much because I just, I, yeah, I start watching a video and then I won't get off YouTube. So that's why I just don't turn on the TV or anything because then I won't work. And um, it's easy to get lost in that. Especially now because there's so much, like all the movies are online now and all the new movies are on so I'm trying to be good like I'll if I finish a couple cards then I'll give myself a couple of days where I can just veg out on the couch so maybe get the little bit darker sky I'm going to have to darken this pretty um, a lot so that the lightning bolt stands out. Let's see how it goes. going back to work on Monday that's exciting if you've been up late hours it's gonna take a little bit of time to get adjusted the name Nancy the name of the deck that we were talking on about um, yeah my soul whispers Oracle And, and it was put out pretty quick, I remember, because I remember last year or seeing images of it and then all of a sudden it's out. So that was quick. Let 
me check. I am trying to figure out. I think I don't have my paper with me, but I'm pretty sure that the let's see if I have my little guide for this card. Oh, I kind of do. Yeah. So I'm just checking to see where it's going to get cut off. So it's going to get cut off here. So around here. This is, I'm going to give myself a little guide. So around here, I have to kind of darken this bottom part. Yes, the, the honeycomb sp um, spread. Um, a lot of decks are coming out, yeah. And I've contemplated if I should go with, you know, like do a Kickstarter and go with a more expensive printer. <sighs> but there's so many downfalls I mean it, it's it takes much more time and um, it just um, I think the the printing errors especially if like a lot of the printers are in China and there's a reason for that because the US printers are very expensive so it's a tricky balance. But my decks are pretty um like I, I like to keep it simple. <laughs> I do want a good quality card stock. I don't want anything flimsy. But, um, I don't know, I might one day go with a, a different printer. They're very high prices. Yeah, very high. And um, especially for those people that, you know, have to hire somebody to illustrate um, they have to pay the illustrator and a graphic designer if they're going to do a book and, uh, and then the printer separate so it's just a lot a lot of money but in my case I'm lucky because I can do them all myself but you're still looking at you know at least 12,000. Hi, thank you, Christy. I I do my my thing is I I can't stand long like I once the my deck is done, I want it out. <laughs> so uh, part of it is because I have to I, I usually will go to the next project and um if I finish it, and then I usually don't like to, you know, wait. I'm not a patient person <laughs> when it comes to that. But I guess it would depend. Like, I, I got lucky with the Abyss Tarot. I, that one I would I probably had to go um, with a different printer because I did have a book for it. And um, I had to print, I would have had to print a book. But it got picked up, so I don't have to do that, which was very lucky. Let's see, maybe add some more brown, well, light brown.
So this one's probably going to take another three days. When are you going to do your deck? I have a feeling you have one somewhere hidden, Christy. You probably have one <laughs> started somewhere. should the birdies be? I think I'm going to go with yellow base so they can stand out in the dark for now. No, I know it would be awesome, but I'm too insecure. Ah, we all are. There's not one of us out there that doesn't get the butterflies when you have to put out that deck. Any type of work, you know, even writing or I think it's just human nature, especially when you're putting yourself out something that you've worked on really hard. So for the hermit, sorry, not the hermit, the tower. I'm looking at the lantern. Um, I'm gonna try and keep it a little lighter. And in about, I think, 10 minutes, I'm gonna have to end this session. So I'm doing the, I'm breaking up the tree a little bit. Somehow, maybe here. This is an older tree. Um, do I have certain types of trees in mind when I draw or paint them? I, I like ash trees. Um, for some reason, I just, I like the ash tree. Um, and maple. And. I just like the the texture of the tree itself but I don't have like I don't set off thinking that that's what's gonna happen like tonight I had to do work on another project and I painted a tree <laughs> so this is my third tree this week um, But I have a lot of pictures, so whenever I go out on nature walks, I will take reference photos of different trees and um, roots. If I'm in the woods and I see something that I like, like moss or um, anything, anything that 
would be a good reference for um, a, a nature study, I will take photos and then I'll just like dump them in a folder. And more often than not, I will go back and kind of use those as reference. Yeah, the any any because you think you know how to draw them, and then you realize that you don't. And um, but it, you know you know the basics of them, but it's not. There's certain elements that you kind of forget. Um, you know, like for instance, even like the shadow that will happen under a branch. Um, and the light on one side and cast shadows and stuff like that like you know how to draw a tree but the the details kind of will get you know muddled in memories so I will use that and you know before I start painting I will look at reference photos I don't always have them by my side but I will look at them and kind of remind myself um, because no matter how many times I paint a tree, I'm still missing something. And same goes for, um, yeah, exactly, textures, lines, shadows, all that stuff. You, you know, people. In the past, painters, you know, they didn't have... Uh, camera so a lot of the artists would sit there and kind of draw on the streets so sketch out people and it would be okay um, that's how they would do their studies but now if I start sketching out strangers on the street it probably will not go very well for me um, it, definitely you will get noticed and um, some people will be interested in you know, want to see what you're doing, but it's not, um, you don't see that as much anymore. Especially like if I were to go on New York City subway and start sketching, I would definitely, <laughs> people would see and take notice. You went to an arbore. I can't pronounce that name. Arboretum. I can never pronounce that. I know what it is. Um, yeah, but see, that's a that's a setting where artists are expected to be in, like in a museum, um, a zoo. They're kind of. It's okay, but if you were say, if you went to a grocery store and started sketching people there, um, you most you know. You you get some looks. Arboretum. Okay. <laughs> hey, English is my second language, so I will use that as my excuse. Um, but sometimes those poses that you, you know, like drawing somebody at the grocery store, you'll get a lot of more poses than, than that you need for uh, a drawing than if you were to go somewhere where you're expected. Right? Like, you'd, um, ask, somebody would be picking their vegetables and there you'd be drawing them. So I think 
I'm going to hold off and kind of leave it at here and um, pick it up in a couple of days. But thank you for joining me, for keeping me company. Um, and I will see you. I should really post this, um, let people know when I'm doing these more often. Let's see. Let's see. How do I do this? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And say goodbye to you guys.